Hello and welcome to another edition of Unrendered. I am Tony Regisford and my guest on this edition, uh, Dr. Rosalind Ambrose. She is the chairperson of the National Accreditation Board and Mrs. Nicole Bonaby Baker. She is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Thank I'm you. not often um, accompanied by two beautiful looking women on the same program. So um, this must be Your lucky day. Uh, 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 my lucky day, according <laughs> to Dr. Ambrose. <laughs> now, the issue of the community college, Simmons and Grannies Community College, is still in the news. The whole aspect of the associate degrees and whether, in fact, let me put it in the words of somebody else, um, whether, in fact, they were, the paper it's written on. Um, these are the issues that are still out there. And I guess I would like us to get further clarity after the end of this program. Now, before I start, I would ask you to give me a bit of background of yourself because I want my viewers to know who they're dealing with, not just by name, but in terms of your qualifications and your experience in the subject matter at hand. So I'll start with you, P.S., if you don't mind. Okay. Well, Tony, good evening. I am, as you said, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, a post which I um, assumed in 2010. And well, prior to that, I had worked and headed the Education Project Management Unit in the Ministry of Planning since 2004. Okay. So I had worked very closely with the Ministry of Education since at that time. And even when I worked for 10 years in the Ministry of Finance, I, I actually was assigned to working with the TVET projects in the Ministry of Education from the Ministry of Finance. And the TVET is the techni technical vocational, technical education, vocational education, training. education and skills training. Right. So I, I suppose you would say I have had a long history with the Ministry of Education. But your specific question is um, in relation to the subject we are discussing. Um, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, by dint of the position held, mm -hmm. represents the Honorable Minister of Education at the highest Supreme Governing Body meetings of the University of the West Indies. So since 2010, I have been attending regular meetings of the Council of the University of the West Indies. I have also been attending regular meetings of the University's Finance and General Purpose Committee meetings. And that is where all the key decisions are made, including decisions on accreditation and recognition of okay. the UWI programs. And the process that the UWI followed is identical to the process which our local community college will follow and has commenced. And by training, your, your formal education right. is, is in right. the field of education? Not really. Yeah. I am a trained economist, a okay. BSc economics degree, and my master's degree, well, I actually studied at Cayville campus in Barbados, my first degree, and I did a master's in economic development and policy analysis right. at the University of Nottingham. And actually, at those days, I was in the Ministry of Finance, not knowing that I would become PS Education. But my thesis actually was looking at educational attitudes in relation to the standard of living. And I actually focused using the 1996 Kyrie Consultants Poverty Assessment Study. Okay. The data was available, and I wanted to see how different social classes respond to education and re we desire and demand education based on their socioeconomic conditions. And since then, coming to the Ministry of Education, believe me, I have been able to see what I actually did in You are at home. I'm at home. <laughs> and Dr. Ambrose, you are the chairperson of the National Accreditation Board. People know you um, for many things. Your profession as a, as a doctor. Uh, you're a radiologist, I think. Yes, I am. Right? Consultant and you run a medical imaging center. Yes, I do. And you've established that um, for quite some years now. Yes, so, sir. And I think you... You feature in many things, Thank but let's you. hear about you in relation to the National Accreditation Board. Yes. How did you get to assume that position as chairperson? Well, chairperson. the position of chairperson, the, that person is appointed by cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, the structure of the accreditation board involves uh, persons from virtually the principal um, professions in the country, a um, member from the Bar Association, accounting, engineering, architecture, and so on. and. Um, my role as the, as the chair, I think I gained that uh, position because of my 
work in education, medical education. Mm -hmm. I served as the director of medical education for a number of years with St. George's University. Um, I was part of an, an admissions committee in a previous uh, university. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there, the representative to ACTI, which is the Association of Caribbean Tertiary Institutions, for a number of years, and some of them, unfortunately, were years in a previous time when mm -hmm. St. Vincent had no representative at those meetings. Okay. Um, <coughs> that's unfortunate. But um, I've kept pace with uh, education and its development. Um, I've been a lecturer in um, radiology for more than 15 years, lectured here, lectured in, at the Chinese University of Hong Kong where I, where I was doing my radiology training and also at, during some of my rotations in North America in Canada and USA. So I feel very close to education and development in education and I think it was quite, I was quite pleased that uh, I was appointed the chair. Good. So let's deal with the matter at hand and I'm going to ask um, the permanent secretary to tell me what led up to the process of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College uh, seeking accreditation, basically. Okay. Well, Tony, um, accreditation in the CARICOM region really took off. In the early 2005-2006, um, there was a meeting of the COSOD, which is the CARICOM Council for Human and Social Development, mm -hmm. and the COSOD education meeting in 2006 took a decision, the heads of government signed on, that there should be, first of all, a regional tertiary accreditation mechanism, a body set up. Um, I must tell you that although the decision was taken and signed off in 2007, mm -hmm. to date, that has not yet happened. So at the same time, simultaneously, um, regional governments took a decision that, and at CARICOM level, that right. national accreditation boards should be, should would be established. be established. So at least countries could start the process of having their educational institutions recognized. If you permit me to say that, um, the reason for the move to accreditation is because we were seeing the Caribbean single market and economy was introduced. We were seeing a freeing up of markets in North America we were seen a freeing up in the Caribbean and the entrance into the Caribbean of these offshore universities. Mm -hmm. And we know the UWI, the University of the West Indies, had been operating since 1948. And so it was really in an attempt to ensure that the regional educational institutions secured their footing in the region prior to the entrance of these of the offshore, offshore in universities that could threaten um, their hold on, you know, offering tertiary education. Right. And then the National Accreditation Board in St. Vincent, the government moved swiftly. In the same year that the COSOR decision was taken, 2006, we had an Act Number 35 of 2006, mm -hmm. which established our National Accreditation Board. And then, of course, the chair was appointed and I think Dr. Ambrose, of course, can probably give you a bit more of the accreditation process just to say there are, you know, as I said, there's, there's regional accreditation, then there's national accreditation. There are two other types. There is the programming accreditation, mm, this, this which is, is the what programs that are offered, the programs that, that are offered, individually accredited, which yes. we have recognition right. and articulation agreements, which is what the University of the West Indies did from 1948 until 2010. Right. In 2010, the University of the West Indies attempted to solidify its position now and started the process to have its institutional accreditation, which is really the final stage. So the UWI started the process in 2010, and I was very fortunate that at the council, which took the decision in 2010 to start mm -hmm. the UWI accreditation process after so many years, I was PS in that year in March, so I was there from the beginning. And by the end of last year, 2013, all of the UWI campuses, including the open campuses, they have got their accreditation for the, the different periods that the different councils allow. If you permit me to say, Jamaica, mm -hmm. University Council of Jamaica was set up in 1985, and they, was, they sought accreditation for the Mona campus through that body. Right. The Barbados Accreditation Council, they have, I don't remember, six or seven years, I don't want to misquote, mm -hmm. but they gave the Cavill campus for a period of time, and the St. Augustine campus, they have the, the Trinidad Association, the Council, Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago, they have granted for that campus. But there was also a recognition, mutual recognition, 
recognition agreement for the open campuses in addition to these bodies mm -hmm. recognizing the individual governments who have the open campuses including St. Vincent and the Grenadines had to indicate at cabinet level whether they were willing to accept and recognize the open campus in the individual territories and the Ministry of Education piloted that self-study for the open campus mm -hmm. through the cabinet last year and actually I was fortunate to be the permanent secretary and my minister, the Honorable Golden Miguel, we hosted the meeting of the technical advisory group January last year mm -hmm. where we announced that we had recognized the open campus in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Good. And Dr. Ambrose, you being the chairperson of the National Accreditation <coughs> Board, perhaps you can further explain this whole accreditation process, what it is that you are going to do. And let's bring the matter to the St. Vincent Community College, because this is the hot topic, mm -hmm. basically. What it is that the National Accreditation Board has to do to give the St. Vincent and Grandines Community College the accreditation that it seeks? Right. Let me just pick up a little bit from where P.S. Uh, mentioned about the CARICOM initiative. Um, we have an act that was passed here. CARICOM actually presented a draft model act so that because we're saying common economies and common market mm -hmm. so that we had a framework to work with so that everybody's act is not vastly different from the others. Um, and then our act was passed here. Now, it's not so much as to what does the accreditation board have to do because accreditation itself is a process. Mm -hmm. It's a long process. It's not a new process, mind you. It began back in 1787, somewhere like that, when the state of New York was perhaps the first place to take this kind of thing, approach. this initiative mm -hmm. approach of accreditation. So it's not new. It's new to the region, but it's not a new something. Um, and it's a process. It's a stepwise process. And initially, any institution, post-secondary institution, tertiary institution, who wishes to function in a particular domain, must follow these processes. We are not going to leapfrog over one step because of any particular type of institution that it is. The steps are there and the process is specific. So that each institution must present an application to the accreditation board mm -hmm. as to what is their intent, their mission, how they're going to function, what kind of curriculum, what sort of degrees they're going to offer, their grading policies, and how the institution is going to operate. And there are certain specific things that criteria that classify, are you an institution, yes or no? Because, you know, you can decide that you're having a college of culinary sciences. Right. Okay, part of the accreditation process is that we will do a a site visit but perhaps we come to look at your institution you don't own a single stove or an oven mm -hmm. you have no pots and pans right, so and really certainly really. you're not mm -hmm. what you say you are yes. so this is why these things must happen in a stepwise process so the application will be assessed by the board as to whether all the components are present and the answers are appropriate to what we ask because we will not accept an application where under the faculty it says not applicable. Mm -hmm. Now certainly, how can you have an institution and the faculty is not applicable? We need to see that. Then based on that review, we'll have the site visit where we want to see that the appropriate things are in place. And then we'll have consultation and recommendation. When all of that is satisfactory to the law, the accreditation board will decide that yes, this institution does meet the requirements. It has a library. It has the various things, it has student services and, and all so these on. appropriate bits. Only after these things are in place will the, the institution be recognized and registered to function as what it says that it is. So this is even before is. the actual course material that the, the, the institution is offering comes under examination. Examination, you are, exactly. You're, you're dealing yeah. with some more basic stuff even basic before stuff. then. It yeah. must be yeah. mm -hmm. real, we must see, it must understand. Mm -hmm. and evidence that it is real. Following that, the institution must then do a self-study, self-assessment. Now here's the part. In order to assess, before you can be granted full accreditation, there must be a way that the board or anyone from anywhere can assess, is this uh, program or this institution providing the quality education that is intended? You can't assess a program where no one's ever graduated from right. it because you, there's no track record. Mm -hmm. That 
is the curriculum appropriate? Are the people uh, having a good pass rate? What are your statistics and staff evaluation? Because if someone who can hardly put three sentences together is teaching an English class, then you know that cannot be right. appropriate. Mm. So that has to come out in the self-study and the self-assessment. And then based on that, we will then put in place the process that the accreditation is granted. It may be conditionally granted because there are a few weaknesses that need to right, be dealt so with. Go back and and re then exactly, mm. and then re-examine and then the full accreditation is granted. That is a global process. Yes. It's not unique to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So when an institution has only graduated less than two classes, or maybe how many classes they've graduated, whatever, even if it's just one class, mm. you cannot have granted accreditation to a program before you knew what was the outcome of the people from that program. Mm -hmm. But granted, the um, higher education institutions in the region have already considered what they would accept as being appropriate so, to so transition and into their institution. And this is the recognition part. And that but is, we, yes. we're at the end of the first um, part of the segment of this um, program. In fact, we've actually run over time, but I suspect that we will continue to encroach on the, on the time in this sure. dealing with this topic. But let me just pull up here, mm -hmm. go to the break, come back, and let's further examine that accreditation and recognition right. where things overlap, where right. they're different, and so on. So the people have a full understanding of what both things mean right. yes. when we come back. Yes. This is Unrendered on IKTV. I'm chatting with Dr. Rosalind Ambrose. She's the chairperson of the National Accreditation Board. And Mrs. Nicole Barnaby Baker. She's the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education. More with my guests when we come back. Thank you.